It's interesting that we live in a technology world and we're reading a book about the future and it talks about things that have to have technology plugged into it. We saw that when the two witnesses were killed, that their bodies laid out for three and a half days and then they were resurrected and went up to heaven and the entire world saw it. Now that couldn't happen unless we had, you know, what we have today, the entire world being able to watch one event. So they watched, the entire world was able to watch it. So technology had to make that happen. Now, is that technology, if it's in a hundred years, will the technology that we have today that allows people around the world to see an event while it happens, will it be the same technology in a hundred years? Or will a better technology replace that? We don't know. And you go, you think it might be a hundred years before Christ returns? Hey, to God, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. The Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises. He wants to return. But his desire is that all would be saved and all would come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants more. He loves people. He wants more people to make it into heaven. So he's waiting. So yes, even though it looks like it's could, it, it's got to be the end. Don't you think you would have felt that way if you were 25 years old in 1942 and Hitler was doing all of his atrocities against the Jews? Don't you think you would have felt like this has got to be the end? There's a world war. We got a, a madman. This has got to be the Antichrist. You would be thinking that then. Who knows that this might not be some kind of a birth pain where things seem to be more evident, maybe a worse one than then, and then things will calm down again. And in a hundred years, the technology that will allow us to be able to see one event around the world will still be able to see it, but it may be a completely different technology. For example, it might be satellites. Now we see things around the world through cable systems and a connection of satellites and different things that happen. But, but there will be a different technology that will take place in less than 100 years that will allow that to happen. Now, I bring that up because the Bible said that the entire world was going to take a mark and that that mark was going to allow them to buy and sell anywhere. It's in this chapter. We're going to read in a couple of minutes that if you don't have the mark, you can't buy and sell. So initially, it's thought that that's a tattoo, right? Or a tattoo, as some people call them. And you get the tattoo on your forehead and the back of your hand. And the original movies on the on Revelation that were made actually had people receiving a tattoo on the back of their head. And then a barcode came out. And people started looking at the barcode. And we were told that there's two large barcodes, in the, one in the middle and two on each side, and those represent six. It's six, six, six. The barcodes, they're, they're the mark of the beast. Now, I don't know what that means. You're buying your milk with the mark of the beast on it. I'm not quite sure what that means, but people were worried. Should we buy things with barcodes on it? Then there were credit cards. Maybe credit cards before barcodes. I get lost on what came first. And, and now I can buy things. I got a number. We're each given a number. And now we can buy or sell with that number. Or we can at least buy with that number. So is that the mark of the beast? And people are worried about it. Should we use credit cards? Listen, first of all, whatever the mark of the beast is, you're not going to take it by accident. You're going to know what you're doing. You're not going to wake up and go, it was credit cards all along, and now I took the mark of the beast. It says those that take the mark of the beast cannot be saved. They, they, they are beyond salvation. They reject Christ to the extent that they cannot be saved. You will not take it by accident. You will know you are taking it. This harkens back to giving allegiance to the Roman emperors. You will be given allegiance to the Antichrist when you take it. Now, then chips came along, right? You're able to chip your pet, which is a locator chip, right? So if they find your cat, they check for a chip, they can find your information about that. Well, they have chips that they can inject into you. And some companies, I don't know, 20 years ago now, maybe longer, wanted to put chips inside of all the people that worked for them, like in their hands, so that they could have access into certain areas, into certain computers, into certain things. And people were like, I ain't taking that. That's the mark of the beast. Now we go, eh, not quite sure that's the mark of the beast. Um, maybe the, the, the mark of the beast is, is cryptocurrency. It's programmable money. They can program it to have a date where you can't spend it anymore. They could program it to take it away from you if you don't fit certain requirements. So that's the value. People say, I don't understand. I don't understand Bitcoin, it's nothing. Well, your program on your computer is nothing. I have a Logos program on my computer, which allows me to do Bible study 
it's very expensive. I bought it a long time ago and it's very expensive, but it really is nothing. It's, it's a program. It's a bunch of, of zeros and, and what is, what are programs? Zeros and ones, is that right? It's a bunch of zeros and ones. It's nothing, but it's valuable. And it's extremely valuable to me. And so Bitcoin, cryptocurrency has a value that it is programmable. There's, it's, it's not just like having nothing. In fact, if you compare a dollar bill to a programmable uh, dollar, pretty soon the dollar bill is going to be nothing and the programmable U United States coin is going to have value, even though it's nothing. Because when you think about it, what is the dollar? How much, how much value, how much is that paper worth that's in that dollar? So it really is nothing. It's the same thing. It works on the same principle, except it's programmable money. Now, if the Lord waits 100 years to, before he comes back, what else are we going to have? What other kind of technologies? So when you look at the, him giving life to the beast, is this AI, artificial general intelligence, where the beast is programmed, this image of the beast is a robot that's made by the people of the world, and then it's programmed with artificial intelligence, and it becomes self-aware, and it's able to command people to be killed who won't bow down and worship him? Maybe. I can tell you this, artificial intelligence, uh, chat, GPT, um, the Google, whatever it is, all of these are not what they've sold you on so far. They, 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 they've, you've been sold that if you ask it to write you a paper, that it can write you a paper, or you can ask it to write you a sermon, that you could, it can write you a sermon, and it can do some of those things basically, but it only can spit out what's been programmed into it. And the, and the values of the person programming it are the values that are being spit out now. That's what's coming out. And so when you ask it questions and it responds in a certain way, it's responding in the way that those that programmed it want it to be. And those are people that are in the world. They happen to be the same people that are making our movies, happen to be the same people that are running Disney, they happen to be the same people that are, are, are programming what's going into AI. So when you start asking it questions, it's going to respond to you based on that. And there have been some interesting experiments that have been done where misinformation has been given out by at least uh, chat GPT. So could this be a robot that has artificial intelligence? And is there, ever, is there really an chance that artificial intel an art artificial intelligent robot would become self-aware? Could they really become like, I, I know who I am and I'm a person. I've been programmed and I'm a person. The answer to that is probably not. Now, if a program is advanced enough and has a connection to a robot who might be connected to other robots, you know, the, the, the famous, what's the famous question? You know, you've got an artificial intelligence robot and you ask it to make the best paper clip you can make. Innocent enough, right? So it starts calculating. It starts getting all the information it has access to. And it starts calculating. And it finally decides the best way to make the best paper clip is to kill humans. So now the artificial intelligence goes out through the robotic work to kill humans, not because it's personal, but because it's trying to make the best paper clip and humans hinder making the best paper clip. So that's kind of the thought. Elon Musk, it's the first time I've ever quoted him from the, from the pulpit, by the way. Elon Musk said, it's like when we're building a road and there's an ant pile in the way, we don't have a problem with those ants. We don't have a hatred for those ants, but we wipe them out because we got a road to build. And that's the danger of AI. At some point, if, when it is robotic, which it's not now, it's just a computer, but when it's connected with robotics, there could be a time where it would say, nothing personal, but you guys are in the way of what I've got to do. So that's kind of the whole thing there. So could this be, people say this is, you know, you hear people, in the, this is a robot AI, an AI robot. Could it be? Maybe. Could it be that he has been granted to bring life to this thing? That the, the false prophet, this is a, like calling fire down from heaven, that he gave it breath and then it became alive and then it was able to tell that? M maybe. So this beast sees who worships him and those who won't worship the image are killed. 